We're playing SmackDown 2, Know Your World. So, here's the roster selection. Who's a good one to go for? Okay, I'll be humble and I'll pick someone who isn't too big of a name. Okay, who do we face? You know, I'm all for family values. Let's go with the good father. We gotta show the audience true manners to teach our children. Hey, let's do the Smackdown Arena and the War is War Matt. Just to make everything confusing. The entrances in this game are... Well, interesting. Instead of having the wrestlers walk down the ramp, they walk in mid-air in front of the Titantrons. It's like they're walking in, in place on the Titantron itself. To be honest, I really like this. Like, this is pretty cool. It has an arcadey vibe to it, like... You get to see the Titantron in the background, which makes each wrestler look a little a little more unique. I don't know, I, I think it's cool. But here we go. This is awkward. You know, being a good father and teaching good values for our kids, I'm not going to attack him and just let him win. That's what a polite person would do. See, look how happy he looks now. He's dancing. Wait, no, no, why are you following me? You don't understand what I'm doing. Oh god, they've installed an invisible wall we can't leave. They've trapped us in here, to wrestle for eternity. Who needs family values? You gotta punch someone every now and again. Okay, now back to getting counted out. Nope, I think the walk just tripped over. I can do this all day. Well, I guess that's it then. See, look how happy he is. I've got him dancing his heart out. On with the rest of the game, and there's one gripe I do have of this game. The loading times aren't great. I mean, this is a PS1 game, so it isn't uncommon, and the loading times themselves aren't really that bad. But what gets me is the prevalence of these loading screens. They appear all the time. Loading the entrances and the matches, okay, that makes sense. But loading other modes, such as the bell records, create modes, pretty much everything on the main menu except exhibition. Hell, even the options menu loads. What the hell kind of game needs to load the options menu for this long? It's just buttons. To be fair, the loading screens themselves are quite nice. I mean, they're quite artistic and colourful and scary. Very scary. I'd rather not play a game where Steve Blackman is gonna murder me. But let's sit through a loading screen to look at the rankings. I mean, this is cool. Here you can set who's going for what championship. And it's all fully editable. Now, everybody wants success. So of course everyone is hunting for the WWF championship. Nobody's interested in the, in the Conor Nell championship. Except Gangrel, he'll fight for it. But let's move on to the matches, like the Anywhere Fall match. The, not Falls Count Anywhere, Anywhere Fall. Yeah, like my other favourite matches, Wing King the. Anyway, as you guessed, this match is Falls Count Anywhere. And of course you can go from the wing to the stage to the backstage with lots of areas to go. It's great. Except there's one problem. Remember I talked about the loading times? Well, that's what happens every time you go somewhere new. Like, it's not too bad here, but it does kill the flow a little bit when you're looking at this a lot of the time. You can't go anywhere immediately, though. You have to wait for the owl to say you can go. When it's blue, you can go to another area. When it's red, you sit your ass down. The bell doesn't dismiss you, the owl dismisses you. All worship the owl. The backstage lobby has a bunch of unbarricaded people. I think a lawsuit sounds right about now. Let's attack them. I can't. They've developed some force field around them. Anyway, into the dining area, I guess. Where I grab a mop from backstage of all things to hit Kurt Angle with. Look at this. Imagine walking into a restaurant and seeing this. With no context, what the hell is going on here? Outside, we can fight on the road. And somehow narrowly avoid death. Apparently, wrestling moves protect you from car collisions. Dude was literally just standing on the road and this guy didn't even stop. It's just like, you get what you deserve, I have no problem going to jail for this. One last visit, and we're off to the bar. This bartender is really not concerned that these guys just came in and started fighting. Yeah, just stand there cleaning your glass, minding your own business. Dude, I think the glass is clean, like by now you can stop. And after winning the match in the bar, outside the arena, Mankind still has enough courtesy to want back to the arena just so he can celebrate in the wing. Put the next match on hold. I need to get back and point my arm in the air in front of fans. Well, on to Hell in a Cell. Interestingly, this game uses a cell design that was never used in real life for some reason. I mean, it's still pretty cool. There's no door on the thing, so you need to wham head first into the wall to get out. And then you can pick up the plate of steel and smack your opponent with it. Okay, this Hell in a Cell is actually better than the real one. You can still climb and even knock your opponent off. 
and he just gets up like nothing happened. You fell from a 16 foot high cage onto the floor and you're just like, ah, I'll just walk it off. You can also put them through the middle of the part of the cell. Though, good luck doing that, it has to be so precise. Oh, this is awkward. I think Taker got offended by that kick. He's just staring at me like, dude, what the hell? Throw me off a 16 foot cell to my death all you want, but kick me in the gut? Really, dude? Let's try something that won't offend The Undertaker. We'll play a casket match. So this match works as you expect. Just vertically pick up the casket and hit your opponent with it. You know, like Uncle Cedric does every Tuesday. Or you could just one into it yourself, that works too. Jeez Gangrel, calm down. what the casket ever do to you? At least Edge was nice enough to leap into it himself to make Gangrel feel better. Ever see someone repeatedly elbow a guy in the casket? Well now you have. Frustratingly, even though Edge has jumped in himself, when I actually want to get him in, I can't seem to do it. Eventually he gets in, and the door magically appears on top when it's when he's fully in. And as a reward, we get an orbital view of Gangwell standing in the middle of the wing doing nothing. Guys, is someone gonna tell him he needs to leave? Like the match is over and he's he's still there. He's just standing there, he needs to leave. Anyway, now that Gangrel has been forcefully removed from the wing, let's head into the Royal Wumble. The Royal Wumble is one of my favorite matches to go back to in these old games. Until SmackDown vs. War. Like, there were no mini games to eliminate people, you just throw them over the ropes and knock them out. It's so fast and so fun. Except for this game. Yeah, even in the Royal Wumble match, these loading times are a pain. It basically ruins the entire match. You're trying to play, and then every time someone comes in, you have to sit and watch this bar for a good few hours before you can play again. Like, at first the long times were annoying, but now it's almost intolerable. What's less intolerable is Special Referee. Unless you're allergic to referees, I guess. Here you actually get the play as the referee and dictate the result of the match. I mean, when else can you have Funaki beat The Walk? It's everyone's dream. Even The Walks. He may have had some help, but he's no one's gonna notice. Okay, the count somehow started before he even went to the ground, like it, it was a two count after the wall. And this is a pretty cool match, Slobberknocker. This is basically a horde mode. You beat one wrestler and then another one comes in, and then another, and then another. It's pretty cool. So once you beat the first wrestler, the other one loads in and... Wait. Oh no. Oh for god's sake! It's too bad I was only able to get one win and then Jericho rolled me up. What? And Shane's still celebrating. Like, dude, you, got, you just got beat. Why are you the one celebrating? Look at the result. You got one win. You're a disgrace. Well, we've gone through a few good match types, but I want to talk about some of the modes. We'll start with create a pay-per-view. This was one of my personal favorites. The concept's pretty simple. You just put together a match card and play it out. So long as you remove all the pre-matches anyway. I can't wait for the no data versus no data match. But you see, there is one bit, pretty big flaw in this. Guess what it is? Come on, take a guess. The damn loading screens. Every match you set up, it needs to load the menu for exhibition. Okay, I'm sorry, but why does a menu like this need to load? Could it not be implemented into the creator pay-per-view menu itself? I don't even know. It's still pretty cool just putting a match together, it, but it can be a bit of a pain. And now let's talk about creator superstar. Creator superstar is pretty simple, but it's good for what it is. You go through two sections, so you got advanced and standard. Standard is basically you select preset parts, and advanced you can actually create your own stuff. So I decided to make an armored version of Triple H. You can even edit the crowd signs that appear, and you sort of a bit. They even let you edit how they say yes and no for some reason. I mean, it's cool, but whose idea was this? So Armor Triple H now says indubitably, and because he's so polite and passive, he doesn't say no, he says, I'll think about it. But now let's get into the main campaign mode, and the most tedious mode in the game. The season mode. If you don't know why it's tedious, you'll soon find out. Of course we're going to pick our new creation, Armor Triple H, and off we go with War's War. Now we have an entire match card here, and we have only one match. So of course, all these other matches are skippable, right? Well, yes. Only one problem. You have to sit through that for every match. Every single match 
you skip. You have to watch these battling meters go down because there's so much tension and who's gonna win? This random match between Perry Sanding and Rokishi on Smackdown 2 that's not even for a championship. The excitement is just too much, let me know who wins! Well thankfully our match is up next so we get a break from skipping matches for now and we get to see Armored Triple H in action. Look at him go. Kai and Tai's greatest ever member indeed. He's not even here to bury anyone. Godzilla losing to this guy in two seconds would be expected. And match has started. Okay, I just smacked D-Lo in the face at full force with a metal arm. No way he's not knocked out or just dead. This dude's a lot more acrobatic than the original Triple H, I can tell you that. Did you ever think you would see a robot body Triple H hit a wrestler with his butt? Because I did. My dream has come true. I've finally seen it. Here's what we've really been waiting for. That's right. The worm. Or rather, the worm. -ah. The most devastating move in all of pro wrestling. Of course he's not kicking out of that. It's a metal arm to the face. Oh god, like what happened to his hands? What is this creature? Is he magic? Look how happy he is to win though. It's so inspiring. Well, now that that's over, we are back to more bloody skipping. Yep, there are eight matches on the card. And in every single one that isn't your own, you have to go through this to skip. It takes ten times longer than it should. Or maybe eleven times or twelve times, doesn't really matter. I don't care about these matches enough to sit through this. Oh, but it gets even better. Because every so often, our old friend returns. Loading screens! Every so often we get a random cutscene with some random wrestler about some random event. It's random. And it means nothing. Oh, Edge isn't happy he lost and takes it out on the camera guy? Gee, I wonder if this storyline is followed up on next week. And the best part about this is the loading screen after this. It's the same person who beat Edge in the match. Just rubbing salt into the wound. Anyway, back to more skipping. Like, could they not give us the option to turn this off? Is this really essential to the gameplay? Well, next week we're on SmackDown. Are you kidding me? I don't even have a match. Armored Triple H isn't even booked for this week. Why am I here? But you know what's great? Is that even though I don't have a match, I still have to skip every single one of these matches. All of them. I have to sit through all of them and watch these battling meters rob more minutes of my life. And we still have to sit through some random cutscenes. And those loading screens. Oh, Armored H is here. I mean, you may as well go home mate, you're not even booked. And we have another cutscene where Devon Dudley is just so pissed that he lost against Qu- That he lost his match. You know guys, I don't know what I would have done if I didn't know Devon was upset. Send your prayers to Devon Dudley. Hope you win next week. Oh, and uh, if you're wondering, no follow-up to Edge last week. That cutscene was completely meaningless. Unlike the Devon one. Hey, we actually have a match this week. Can't wait to reach it in 14 years. Oh, great. Another cutscene. I was told I would have a special match tonight. Well, I am here. Who is my opponent? Um, dude, it's me. Did no one tell you? Did you genuinely not know and decide to walk up and be like, Um, so does anyone know who I'm facing? Nobody told me anything. And here's the Eddie Gangrel match for Unicorn and Earl title. The only match that can be done for the title. Here we go. Finally our next match. Metal attack! Oh, uh, wait. Uh, that metal attack! The most devastating dropkick you will ever see. Here we go again. The real most devastating move you'll ever see. See, it even knocked him out. As it should, quite frankly. Yeah, now it's time to celebrate with my Christmas trees. Another win. Mankind vs. Bubba Ray Dudley with Triple H as the special referee. How, how did this match come about? And why use that Triple H? The other one is better. Another Smackdown and we still don't have a match. Another skip fest it is. But unfortunately, week 4 in this season mode is a long one. There are a lot of cutscenes that happen here. First we have the walk cutting a promo. Or just saying, feel the electricity when the people's champ enters, and that's it. He just came out, said that, and that's it. That was just an ego boost. Okay, we get it, you're the walk. God, can we get on with this game? Next cutscene we have is in the very next match. 
I need both of you to work on this. X-Pac, what do you think? How about you, Wodog? Okay, I think they're just working on a school project. We've just put a random camera in these guys' dormitory. I don't think X-Pac and Wodog are cooperating. Triple H is getting a little upset. Fine, I guess I'll just build this volcano myself. Scotty 2 Hottie wins. The guy who stole my finisher. Next cutscene we have, the walk is attacked by Wodog. With a mop. With a mop. Wodog, you had all this time to find the perfect weapon and you chose a mop. Oh, another Eddie vs Gangrel match. How many times are these guys gonna fight each other? A battle royal between Mankind, Rikishi, Devon, and Steve Blackman. What a random selection of people. What is the story behind this match? Oh dear, Devon lost again. He's not gonna be happy about that. Okay, next cutscene we have. We have Redacted and Triple H yelling at the walk. Guys, I think you're missing someone, like... The walk? Oh wait, here he is. And he's saying Stone Cold is here. Dude, the show's over. He's a bit late, don't you think? Well, at least it's over now. Except it's not. We still have more cutscenes to go through. Oh, jolly Holly, it's Hardcore Holly. Oh, and Stone Cold is here. And he's committing vehicular destruction. And that's the bottom line. The Stone Cold said so. That was weird. Why can he talk and no one else can? What, what, what the hell was that all about? Why would you have a loading screen to load the menu only to immediately load another loading screen for something else? Before I had the chance to do anything. Why not just load what you're gonna load here? Oh my god, it's everything in this mode has to be so long. Ah, great. Stone Cold's gonna be at Backlash. D guys, the show's over. You can leave. You can go home. Why are you still here? The place is still packed. They won't stop cheering. There's nobody here. Well, I cannot stomach any more season mode, so we're gonna end it here. Honestly, I, I really love this game. The season mode is dumb, yes, but the rest of the game honestly is a blast. Anyways, if you enjoyed that, feel free to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.